Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Hey everybody, this is Wileen Benson. This is our daily gratitude call. Thank you for joining our call today. I, um, I'm i just going with the words that popped in my head for our uh, private silent meditation. And I know that this is gonna mean something uh, very special to each one of us. Gratitude for walking with God. Gratitude for walking with God. And um, I'm just going to start our timer right now. We're going to jump right into this. So I've got uh, 90 seconds on our timer. We're just going to do a private silent meditation for that 90 seconds on gratitude for walking with God and just write down whatever comes to you and then we'll share. So 90 seconds begins right now. All right. <clears throat> um, a couple of things have been mentioned. Um, well, um, Melissa mentioned before we started uh, the recording that her son had been baptized and Lara, um, who's also on the call mentioned that she had seen a picture of him on um, Facebook and that she just saw the light of Christ in his eyes. And um, Melinda last, I think it was on Friday or sometime, um, was talking about auras and, you know, being able to see like different, um, auras around people. And I feel like that there is definitely a, a light or some sort of an energetic field that can be expanded when we walk and talk with God. And, um, I know I have felt that light within me and um, have been able to, uh, other people have mentioned that they can feel, you know, something different when they're around me. And I know that that is um, something that comes from, from being close to God. And also I um, have been doing a lot of just in my daily GPS asking about to, to learn more about the space between kind of that gap between what you know and what you're, you know, wanting to know or what you're wanting to experience. And that there's this, like this gap that we have to really rely on faith. And that is where um, I get to walk with God is in that gap. And so I'm learning a lot more about um, creating a solid uh, bridge or something you know, that, that helps me be in the gap without falling <laughs> and that, and I have to walk with God. It's like, um, when Peter was walking on the water, as long as he was, had eyes on Christ, he was able to stay on the top of the water. But as soon as he took his eyes off of him, he started to sink. And I'm, uh, 
I'm just so grateful that that is something that's available to us as well. Um, Melissa. Um, so yeah, my, my son got baptized this weekend and it just really felt like, like a payday for mm -hmm. me. Um, it, we, my husband and I have really made, um, an effort to teach our kids how important it is to follow Christ's example. And, um, he's been looking forward to this day for years. He's couldn't wait to be eight so we could get baptized and I'm so grateful for my husband because I, you know, I do everything I can to repair them and, and share my testimony with them. But I know what my husband did with him, that he sat down with him and that he taught him how important it is to pray and how important it is to read our scriptures. And in the morning I woke up, we, it, his baptism was pretty early. So I woke him up. And I said, okay, Hunter, it's time to get in the shower. You know, today's your baptism. And he said, okay, mom, hold on. And he, he gets on his knees and he just kneels and prays and he prayed in his head. So I didn't know what he was saying, but he was praying for a good, like two or three minutes. And it was just the sweetest, sweetest thing. And if you know my son, he's very energetic and he's very loud and just a boisterous kind of personality. But after his baptism, he told us how he felt and he was just so meek and um, just his voice was just so um, he, like he had been changed. And he, he told us, he said, I feel like my life has changed. And it was just the sweetest, sweetest experience. And I'm so grateful for Christ's invitation to for all of us to be baptized as he was. Um, and my heart's just full. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. And as you're talking um, and, uh, you know, that Christ has asked him, asked us to follow him. And really that literally is walk with him, walking with God. Thank you. I also want to mention how um, awesome it is that you, you know, mentioned your husband and what a big part he played in preparing your son. Um, I'm, I've been, been invited to speak at a uh, retreat this weekend. And I know that there's still some openings. And so I did post those on all the Facebook groups. If anybody's interested in attending that, there's a um, going to be a men's cabin and a women's cabin. And the, the guy who is um, running the men's part is um, Scott Jackman. And he's sometimes on this call and his uh, message is men of valor and balance. And as you were describing your husband, I was thinking he's definitely a man of valor and a man of balance. Thank you. Um, Robert. Well, I appreciate Melissa's story. Uh, each story is different in their walk with God. Uh, and, and I happen to be writing in my chapter 30, uh, of how I transformed from uh, my upbringing in belief there was no God, and I've mentioned that before, uh, and, and I even proclaimed that I didn't believe in Jesus Christ, and, and it, how fast it transforms in the most uh, unlikely way, because nobody prepared me for God, uh, like Melissa you exampled, gave the example. And I, uh, and, and my example actually came through a multi-level marketing company, <laughs> uh, one of the oldies, but goodies. And, uh, uh, the, with the American way, if that hints, anyway, <laughs> and, and they, I, I was invited, uh, by the, uh, Angelico, Angelico, uh, I'm probably saying that wrong preacher to come on down and be saved and, and I was around all these Mormon uh, people that uh, I looked at one of them and said I think I'll go down and it was it was the beginning of my transformation to religion and to God and to walking with Jesus and now I feel like I'm writing with him and it's it's just a 
it's it's a completely different story, but it's a story just the same of my journey mm-hmm. with a walk with God, with uh, my walk with God, awesome. and I get to share that with the world. Yeah, thank you. I love that yeah. you're that you're writing with God with your book that you're writing. That's awesome. Yeah. I also um, caught that word. Um, wrote that word invitation, you know, that um, uh, when we are on a walk with God, it always starts with an invitation. And whether it's an invitation from our parents or if it's an invitation from a friend or an evangelical preacher, or if it is um, a specific invitation that we receive from God. I, I know I've talked to people that they really you know, have had an experience where they know that God has been present with them and has personally invited them to come to him. Uh, yes. And, and, and I think the outstanding part was these were all people who were LDS, who they knew in their heart, they knew their religion. They'd been on missions. I, I didn't know any of this stuff. And none of them ever tried to push me towards Mormonism or push me towards a belief in God. Uh, they, and I, I'm grateful that they were able to allow me Mm -hmm. as Melissa is allowing Hunter to grow uh, in the the church um, in his testimony. So, yes. Thank you. Yeah. I love that when, um, cause that's God's way, isn't it? Just, um, agency allowing, just extending an invitation and allowing everyone to come as they will. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Who else? I'll share. Cammy. So just a minute here. Um, the, the thoughts that I wrote down are walking with God is trust, faith, learning to believe in myself and the inspiration that I am receiving. It requires being willing to do things because I know within my spirit that that is what God wants me to do, regardless of what others may be telling me I should do. Mm. And that it is the greatest adventure I could ever have. Well, beautiful requires a willing spirit. I love that. Thank you. Regardless of what others are doing around you too. How powerful. Thank you. Who else? So this morning, just after learning some things yesterday, I, re- I recognized that I had replaced a bad pattern with another bad thing, but it wasn't as bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I woke up in a, a state of just feeling hopeless and just getting on. Like I wrote in my journal and I just asked for help. And then I was listening to a talk and then I realized it was time for the armor the armor of God call and just all of these things. And I only listened to probably three minutes of that talk, but he asked a question, a general conference talk. And he said, what am I in greater need of? And I realized it's just faith. It's, you know, it's simple, the small and simple things. And then just through these, through these different calls and listening to these stories and how strengthening it is and how, we can be, we can walk with God even when we are in those dark places and he can bring us to light and it's just simple and it doesn't have to be hard or complicated. Awesome. I love that. And every day when we do our daily GBS, we're going into that space where we're asking, what, what am I in greater need of? You know, whether it's we're focusing on an end result, a goal that we have, you know, on our vision board, we're always asking that question, what am I in greater need of? What's the next most important thing? And uh, just beautiful shares. Thanks, Tyree. Anybody else? Laura? Yeah, I, um, when we were doing that, you know, the first thing that came to me for gratitude for walking with God is that he's before me. So he's a step He's always before me, looking ahead. He's ahead, you know, and when I follow him, I don't have to worry where I'm going 
or what's the right way. You know, he can see the whole picture, the whole of creation. So I can trust that we're going the right way. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really simple. But, you know, he's like, a, like when you have a guide with a map, like you don't have to worry. You can just lay it all. You can just enjoy the ride. Just mm -hmm. enjoy the view. You know, when you're following a guide, you're like, oh, look at the scenery. This is so awesome. Blah, 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 you know, but if you're on your own trying to follow the map, you're like, okay, are we going the right way? Like, mm -hmm. what is it? Oh, that's really pretty. Yeah. Okay. And you take 10 more steps and you're like, wait, are we, what, is this the road or that road? You know? And like a guide will tell you what the dangers are, tell you the history, tell you, they'll open your mind to different things that you would never know just looking at a rock, you know, mm -hmm. like, um, so it's just, um, walking with God is, um, absolutely amazing. And each one of you have spoken so deeply to my heart today. I mean, I don't know, I can't remember it all, but like, you know, Tammy, where you, what you were talking about and, um, with, you know, you have to, it doesn't matter if it makes sense to you even like sometimes following walking with God doesn't even make sense to me and, um, much less anybody else, you know? And, um, but you just have to follow him and, and not, and not worry because you know, you're on the right way. It's that simple. I love that. As you were talking, I was whisked back to a previous a memory from when I was a teenager, I was 13 years old and I was on a survival trek and um, with other kids that were around my age, um, I was one of the youngest and most everybody was like, it was like from age 13 to 18. And we had guides, you know, we had um, a leader within our group. We had split up into groups, sort of like family units. And um, the very first night was a moonless night and we did a night hike. And all, I, I remember I was so tired because we hiked almost all night. We arrived at our camp at like 5 a.m. And we'd been hiking, you know, since, I mean, I think I got up like at seven o'clock that morning, we left or something like that. And so I was so tired as I was walking. And I just remember the girl in front of me, I still remember who it was even, Stan, who was walking in front of me and she had a white shirt on. And I was so grateful that she had a white shirt on because literally you could not see your hand in front of your face hardly. And, um, and I just focused on that white shirt and I just walked behind her. I, there is no way I could not see beyond. I couldn't see where I was going. Well, I didn't know how long it was. I didn't know, you know, how far we were going to have to hike. I didn't know where we were going to even end up. And so it really doesn't make sense to try to find my way when I have literally nothing to go by other than that white shirt in front of me. And that's, uh, that's all I had to focus on. And I'm, and I was able to I remember I actually fell asleep walking and I ran into her <laughs> Wow! because I was so tired. Oh my gosh. But well, she held okay. me up. <laughs> That's awesome. And sometimes we, we, we help each other that way, don't we? So the person in front of us is following and the, per, you know what I mean? The per person in front of them is following. And so it's, it's following God. And sometimes that means mm -hmm. following other faithful people. And the other thing that occurs to me is, wow, that would never happen today. Like who's going to send their kid on a trek like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, like what? <laughs> I know, but <laughs> but um, that's one of those that you can tell your grandkids someday when I was a kid. Yes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have time for maybe one more share. Melinda. Um, it's funny. I don't, I wasn't on that quite of an, as intense trek, but, or trip or whatever, but I did meet my husband on a similar three-day trek and, oh, it was fun times, but <laughs> <laughs> um, when, when I thought about walking with God, uh, I thought back to this last week and navigating new waters and I had so many deadlines um, of this new, of the new, right? Everything was new. And so it was trying to learn how to navigate and be in this new and, and, and meet the timelines. And 
everything was feeling really heavy. And I just, it goes back to God's logic. And every time I was prompted to do something, I was, I was like, how in the world am I going to be able to finish this? If I'm doing these steps that you're asking me to do first, it doesn't make sense to me. And um, that resistance made things go longer, I know. But as I listened to Heavenly Father's inspired actions, my, um, and just kept, you know, kept going, kept trekking on, I, my res- um, I thought, how am I going to finish everything? And my final, my final timeline was 11.59 Saturday night. And, um, and I just kept being prompted to do other things. And I'm like, what is happening? And, and um, there's no way that I'm going to finish that at, at even at 11, 15 PM, I thought there's no way, but I'm just going to keep doing this. I just got to keep going. And it wasn't until like 11, 45 PM when I was like, oh, this might can happen. Like this is happening. <laughs> and I just felt all the excitement. Like I knew like in my mind, the logic didn't make sense at all. And it makes me really emotional the week that I went through because just watching it unfold. Um, I just know I, without that resistance, maybe I could have finished sooner if I had just given it all to God and trusted him in my obedience. But I know that because of that contract, because of the growth in it, that that 11.59, when I pushed send on my last thing, I was just celebrating so much. And that has been something difficult for me like this to be able to celebrate, but to celebrate God's hands and things in our lives. Like, it's like, wow, that was the only way is because they knelt in prayer and said, okay, whatever, (laughs) help me finish, please. (laughs) Whatever you say. Thank you, Melinda. I think also, um, you know, I've had deadlines like that where need to have something done, you know, by a certain time. And I'm so focused on the time And I've had that experience where I have distractions come up. And I think that it's like you said, I probably could have finished sooner, but I was so fixated on the time that it's like, well, we, we, you know, we could have like finished this in two hours, but we got to give her some distractions so that it will take, you know, five hours because that's how long she thinks it's going to take. And uh, I think a lot of times that we can allow things to happen a lot faster if we not fixate on what we think, you know, the deadline is, or, you know, how hard it's going to be, or if it's going to happen by that time or whatever. Um, But fixate instead on, on, you know, those questions, like what, what was the question? Um, What am I in greater need of? Or what do I, you know, what's the most important thing for me to focus on right now? And who knows, you know, how fast we can get things accomplished. Yeah, it's really true. I feel like God used um, deadlines like that as a training ground for me um, to just be able to just let go and trust him and just trust him. Absolutely. And the flow that I experience in my work life now is like, I look around, I don't, I don't see people living in that kind of flow, Mm -hmm. you know? And, um, it's so awesome. I mean, somebody was talking to me like, oh, you know, I should be almost near retired right by now, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't even want that. What is retirement? I'm I'm retired, (laughs) you know, I am retired retired right now as I ever want to be. Yeah. I mean, I just, I mean, my life, my work life is amazing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it's part and a, and a big part of it is because God trained me, Melinda, just through that same flow that you're experiencing in Wileen, like, those lessons that you're talking about of just, Hey, yeah, if I just trusted him, this could go really fast. You know, Mm -hmm. this eight hour task could take a half hour. So it's amazing. Is he's just awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I know I'm experiencing that as well. That, that flowing from one thing to the next. And it's, it's interesting because it hasn't really changed. Like you and I have been working together for almost two and a half years and it hasn't really changed. Has it? It's like, 
almost mm -hmm. when we're when we're almost done with one thing, we get the idea for the next. Right. And I'm and I'm reaching out to you and say, okay, this is next. This is what's next. And you're <laughs> like, cool, let's do it. And <laughs> and uh, and I love those moments when you're like, I think we're done. I think I we're know. done because I know something big is coming. And then it comes and you're like, but 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 <laughs> <laughs> But you're always open. You are always yeah. open. You and know? it used and that's to so be, awesome. yeah. And it used to be, and I know you remember this. It used to be like from one thing, stressful thing to the next stressful thing. But now it's like from one yeah. beautiful creation to the next beautiful creation. Right. Isn't that the best? It just is, was a change of uh, attitude about it really. <laughs> 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 knowing who's actually in in yes. charge right it's like he, we know but then he takes us to a deeper level of knowing yeah you know and that's what it always is it's this ever deepening ever expanding um our souls our souls are ever expanding you know and um and that happens through love and acceptance it's just the simplest thing yeah. he is yeah. not complicated and I think you know? it's just really um, key to note that we have always been walking with God. And I know you, Laura and Robert, you know, both of you had experiences in childhood where you weren't um, taught that, you know, you were taught actually even the opposite of it, but you both have shared with me at separate times individually that you still felt and knew that God was guiding you even and protecting you, even though you didn't know him, you know, you didn't know him like you do now. And so it's same with me, you know, I feel like I have been guided throughout this whole time. It's just, I'm way more open to just be like, okay, let's go. We're going <laughs> instead of resisting it and being like, how's this going to happen? Exactly. And yeah. So, so mm -hmm. he's always there. We just need to change our mind about, you know, knowing that he's there and then we can experience a yeah. lot more flow. Yeah. Thank and you. we do that with each other too, you know, like in these conversations, we, we help each other move um, forward and up and out, you know, and um, I'm just really grateful for all of you um, as well as God's direction each day. It's just amazing. Beautiful. Thank you. Let's go ahead and shift over into our permission process. We've created a really awesome uh, space where we can just allow ourselves to just change our perspective and see his hand more fully. So I invite you to go ahead and take a deep breath and just allow yourself to get into that space where all creation happens, space of the unknown, space of faith, place where nothing physical exists at this moment, but there are ideas, there's vision, there's uh, thought, there is belief, there's love. And I invite you to be um, just really open in this space to allow God to be there and present with you. And as you are maybe standing on the edge and seeing across this huge gap of what it is, or maybe it's even just a little, a little crack Maybe it's not even that huge. You just need to take one more step and you're there. But whatever it is, taking that step requires some faith. And I invite you right now to allow yourself to see yourself with God and knowing that Christ has given us an invitation to follow him. And so see yourself with God and with Christ as your example, as, your, as the one leading the way that no longer is it just this gap where there's nothing there because you see him step out and he is upheld. He is sustained. There is something there to hold him and take faith that if you step out and follow him, that as long as you keep your eyes on him, that you're able to be sustained and supported as well. And that there's something physical for you to hold on to. That physical thing is faith in the moment. But as you hold on to faith, that more solid evidence begins to appear. And just continue following him and allow yourself to be led step by step 
and noticing as you're led step by step that each one of these steps represents something that maybe there is a skill that you can develop. Maybe there's a relationship that you get to somebody that you need to, um, to get in touch with. Um, maybe there is a, uh, a phone call that you need to make, you know, whatever it is, whatever is showing up for you as you're following step by step, not even looking down, you don't even know really what's holding you up because you don't look down. You're just looking forward. You're just looking at Christ. You're just following him. But you can tell that it feels solid. There's something beneath your feet that is allowing you to step forward and to continue stepping forward step by step, as long as you follow in his footsteps. And before you know it, you're there, you've arrived. And as you look around, you're on that solid surface on the other side in a place of knowing because you have arrived, you're there and it's easy to see and you can feel what it's like to be there in this, this place where you had just seen in your imagination before, but now it's an actual physical place and writing down any new information that you're gathering of maybe how this looks different than you thought it would, how it feels, writing those emotions down so you can remember and really anchor in those emotions because emotion is uh, a really great um, addition to words that help things happen a lot faster. And just any new information that you're gathering from this meditative experience go ahead and write those down. And also noticing if there are any limiting beliefs that might be showing up for you. And if there is a limiting belief, go ahead and examine the cost of that limiting belief, how much harder and longer the path would be with if you hold on to that limiting belief. And if you are ready to give yourself permission to let go of that limiting belief, you can choose to do that by just saying yes. 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 Awesome. And what are your new beliefs? Let's choose some new beliefs that really align with the experience that you had of just simply putting one foot in front of the other, just stepping forward, following Christ, not even having to see where you're stepping or not even seeing fully exactly where you're going, but knowing that you're going to arrive in the perfect place at the perfect time because you're following the perfect example. You're following the perfect leader. What are your new beliefs that will support you and will help you align with these new truths? And those two or three or four new beliefs invite you to um, really bring those in to your, into your body and to your soul so that as you move forward from this day forward, these new beliefs are what are really inspiring you and helping you to stay focused on your path, but also on the leader of your path, just focusing on the leader and knowing that your path will be perfect if you're following him. And one final question, as you look back to where you came from, there's one simple specific step that was needed for you to really have faith to take that one step to follow him out <clears throat> over this gap and into the unknown. What was the one most important thing that you could do today that represents that one first step that placed you out in the middle of the gap in faith, not knowing where you were going exactly or how you were going to get there, but knowing that Christ knows the way and all you have to do is follow him. What's your inspired shortcut that will keep you focused on, on him? And that when he moves, you move. When he instructs, 
you obey. When he steps out, you follow. What's your one most important thing that you could do today that will keep you centered in Christ and keep you focused on following him? Walking with God. We'll take um, just a couple of minutes for shares. And I also want to just give an invitation to everyone. If you are um, struggling at all and just feel like you haven't quite got what you need in this meditation, I would love to have a conversation with you. All you have to do is just go to askwileen.com and you can schedule a 15 minute call with me, 15 minute mentoring session, askwileen.com. Who has something they'd like to share about their experience today? Melinda? Can I share? Um, so, so when I was young and so my limiting belief was um, that, well, something that father asked me was to feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. And the limiting belief that came up was that it's very dark and cold. And I remember when I was younger that, um, you know, we had to feed the animals or whatever in the snow and, uh, or go get firewood. And I would hate doing that. And, um, when sometimes my mom would say, get out there and go out there. And I remember one time of going out there and I thought I was alone and, um, my dad was already out there so I could go in his footsteps in the snow so that the snow wouldn't get in my boots. I was young and, um, so that I wouldn't get cold if I, if I walked in his footsteps and like the difference that it is when you're out there feeding the animals, when you're with your father or when you're with a group, like all of you together, then by yourself and just realizing that, um, we're, we're never by ourselves because, and the new belief is I walk with God. And so it's bright and warm and comfortable and it's fun to go and feed the sheep when you're with the group and the community and, and your father. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, Melinda. What, what an awesome visual for us to really anchor in these new ideas, these new um, commitments. Thank you. Maybe one more share. I can share. Um, so um, I, my limiting belief for what I was called to do is that um, it feels uncertain, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, however many times I face uncertainty, I have to face it again, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so facing the uncertainty in the gap, right? Mm -hmm. And so the thing is that the new belief, I don't want it to feel certain when I'm doing something new, because that means I'm not moving into new territory. I'm mm -hmm. staying right where I am. So um, being grateful for change and knowing that I'm safe when I don't know and when the ground is uncertain beneath me um, is... Mm -hmm. It just knowing that on a deeper level um, is so important. And I realized that with the, the inspired shortcut that I have, I have a habit of pulling back into certainty mm. in this particular area, you know, whereas other areas I'm like, we, you know, mm -hmm. not this area. And so um, it's just like, it's awesome to, to realize that again, in a new way, you know, <sighs> so beautiful. Thank you. I, you know, and I actually saw things differently as you were talking to, because, you know, I've stepped out into the unknown, like countless times. And especially over the last few couple, probably, I don't know, eight years, but especially the last two years when I've been on my own in my own business, and, uh, and I felt that uncertainty and I've pulled back and I've 
been nervous, but I stepped forward anyway, you know, just trusting, but I'm seeing it differently now. I, the only reason I would feel uncertain is if I thought I was by myself. If I was stepping off of that edge all by myself, it would feel uncertain. But wow. I just, you know, as I was in, in I, I was go, walking through this visualization at the same time as you were, because I was just like telling you what was coming to me as it was coming. Right. And uh, it felt so certain as long as I didn't look down, it was like, there was no gap. There was no right. unknown. There, mm -hmm. there was no like void. It's just, I'm only looking at Christ and I'm just following him. And I trust that he and my father in heaven know what I want. They know what I need. They know what's best for me and they know what the next step is. So yeah. there is only certainty when we're walking with God and really, and, mm -hmm. and I, I love the, your thought that you shared about, you know, being like feeling safe in the uncertain. That's, that's really mm -hmm. what it is. You know, what other people might see as uncertain, it feels so safe and warm. Mm -hmm. Right. But, right. Yeah. Thank, well, thank you. you all. Yeah. Thank you all for everything that you've shared today. This um, I've just created such a higher new understanding of this gap that we've been talking about. And I feel like it's complete. This is one of those times when I'm like, okay, it's done. And I know that this is going to be a masterclass probably next month. So you guys will get to benefit mm -hmm. from that. Well, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being on the call today. We'll look forward to being back together tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time and uh, excited for what we get to create again tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Wonderful. Love, love you. you Thank you. Love you. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, wileenbenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.